hours north of Phoenix, the small town of Snowflake lies at the edge of Arizona's White Mountain region. A popular destination for camping, fishing, hiking, and skiing, this high-altitude area enjoys plenty of sunshine year-round. But you don't want to be stranded on these mountains on a cold, dark night. Just ask Travis Walton. Born and raised in Snowflake, he's still haunted by his intimate encounter with alien beings more than 30 years ago. For years after the incident, it occupied my every thought all the time. It was, it was something I just couldn't shake out of my mind. At the time, Travis was 22 and working on a logging crew in the Sitgreaves National Forest, just outside of town. On November 5, 1975, the team of seven men piled into a pickup truck after a long day's work and headed home just after dusk. We're coming down this road, and uh, we saw some glimmers of light coming through the trees off to the side up ahead. Well, we were thinking, well, maybe a forest fire or maybe uh, an airplane had crashed and was hanging up there in the trees or something, because it was just something really very strange. As the men got closer to the source of the light, they all fell silent. We looked off to the right side, and we saw this object. This was uh, less than 100 feet away, this glowing metallic object hovering there, outlined against the sky. Just the most incredible thing we'd seen. Somebody yelled out, it's a spaceship. I mean, it was just, just incredible. And I yelled, stop the truck. To the horror of the other men, Walton got out of the vehicle. And they started yelling at me to stop and get back in the truck. But at that point, you know, the way I was back then, you young guys, I was kind of showing off for the crew. He walked slowly towards the mysterious craft until he was almost underneath it. I was just standing there looking up at this thing, and I could feel this vibration coming from it, the, the sound. The, it's just a strange mixture of high-frequency tones and this, this, this low, low rumble that you could feel more than, than hear, actually. It was like reflecting light at the same time it was giving off light. Suddenly, it rose up a little bit, and the, and the sound kind of got louder, and it started making this sort of rocky motion. And uh, those guys just get out of here, let's go, let's go. So I just decided I was going to make a dash for it, and I raised up and turned to go, and wham! I just felt this shock hit me, and uh, it just, it's kind of like an electrical shock. It's just this numbing sort of thing, and I was just unconscious. But the guy said, that this uh, a blast of energy come out of the bottom of this thing and it just lit up the whole area just just almost blinding and they said it just picked me up and threw me back through the air and they they said my body went so far and landed so limp they just thought it killed me in a frenzy of fear the crew took off leaving travis behind a lot of people criticize these guys you know how come they didn't stop and save their friend but you know i, I you know, we had no guns, and, and, and you know, the, what are these guys going to do? You know, all they could do is maybe, you know, become victims themselves. So, you know, I really don't find fault with the fact that they, they took off. They just did what I probably would have done, you know? Though they knew they'd sound crazy, the loggers called the town sheriff and explained what had happened. The sheriff uh, interviewed the men, and he was very struck by the fact that the men were so shook up. You know, their faces were white, they were shaken. Uh, you know, um, one of the guys was still crying, and uh, so they were convinced that something very serious had happened. Three of the loggers came back to the forest with the sheriff and other law enforcement officers later that same night, but no trace of Walton could be found. The next day, his disappearance launched a worldwide story and a massive hunt. There was over 50 men combing this area, four-wheel drives, uh, men on horseback. Uh, there were airplanes and helicopters crisscrossing the area. They even brought in tracking dogs. But after four days of fruitless searching, it became clear that no one knew where on earth or elsewhere Travis Walton was. Neither did Walton. When I came to, I was lying on my back on a hard surface. And I could see a light above me. I was thinking I was in a hospital. But Walton soon realized these doctors weren't human. When I finally got where my eyes could focus, I saw this creature standing over me. They were small, just a little over four feet tall. They had a mouth and, and a human arrangement of features. Uh, and their features were small except for the eyes, and the eyes were huge. Another group of aliens then held Walton down and placed a mask over his face. That was the last thing I remember. 
woke up lying face down on the cold pavement here in the dark and uh, I could uh, see a light coming from above. I looked up to see this craft hovering there. You know, it was just there for a second when I looked and it shot straight up and it was gone from sight almost instantly. Walton found himself near the town of Heber, 30 miles from where he had been abducted. He stumbled into the deserted town and called his family from a payphone. When they arrived, Walton learned just how long he had been gone. I thought that this was the same night. They said, hey, feel your face. And I, I reached up and I had this, you know, five-day gro growth of beard. And I looked at the date on my watch, which was days beyond what it was supposed to be. And, and, you know, that was just quite a shock to me. An international media circus soon descended on Snowflake. And it didn't take long before Walton's credibility was put on the line. Then came all these, you know, attacks, you know, claiming that I was hallucinating on drugs, that I'd, that I'd had a transitory psychosis, all that sort of thing. It just, just made it really doubly hard to uh, endure. The Fuhrer eventually died down and life went back to normal for the residents of Snowflake. But not for Travis Walton. Constantly assailed by disbelievers and embraced by fans, he has found it almost impossible to move on with his life. A lot of people think, oh, you were chosen. I don't like that. And uh, I prefer to think that, you know, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time and I did the wrong thing, getting too close. For the time being, Walton still doesn't have the answer to the most important question of all. I don't know where they came from, and I don't know who, who they were. And all I know is what I experienced. So, you know, to me, they're, they're still a mystery.